Every part of this table is special. Every part is bespoke. And for these reasons, it is a, an expensive piece of furniture. Something quite rare in this world. There is no mass production here. It is a hand-built and beautifully made piece, and one that I hope every owner will be proud. The current design is based on a very old design by somebody called Robert Jupe, who patented his idea in 1835. And I was asked to make a copy of his table, um, to which I immediately replied it was far too difficult. Um, but I was forced into it, and eventually I did do it. But then having done that, I realized that there could be a better way to do it. Uh, this man, a wonderful man, came up with a great idea. And uh, I don't really know how many tables were made, possibly only 50. They are now very uh, unusual, very much sought after, and very expensive, and very rare. Uh, but anyway, this table um, copies the idea to some degree, but improves upon it greatly. It stores its own leaves, which Robert Jupes didn't. Um, it took a great many years to perfect what we have now. In fact, it took 15 years up until now. But we have now got to a stage where every table is standardized, every table is drawn in CAD, and everything has been worked out. At the heart of every table, there is a slewing ring which allows the mechanism to pass through 120 degrees. At either end of that uh, movement, there is a, a shock absorber to absorb the shock of the whole system going round. Uh, the ring can be manual, as this table is going to be, or if uh, Michael give me this one, uh, it can be a gear. Uh, that's fine. Uh, it can be a geared tooth like this, um, and an electric motor will drive this round uh, backwards and forwards as the table goes to where it should be. Every single component of the table is now drawn on CAD. Every single one, every single screw, every single washer. A table like this has about 962 components, and something like. 3,756 fastenings. It's quite amazing, uh, the amount of stuff that's in there. Most of the parts that you see here are either laser cut or machine. Um, the stainless steel bits, which are silvery, uh, for example this and the plate underneath, those are all laser cut and then various machine things done to them later. These bits here are machined out of solid aluminium, then they're later hard anodized. Uh, there are some runners here which are commercially available, but they, of course, they have to be cut to the right size. Um, every other bit that you can see, just about every other bit, is, is absolutely special and uh, designed and made only for this table. Everything is drawn in CAD before we put anything together, um, and hopefully um, everything fits, and normally it does. Um, so we don't have too many problems. I think we nearly got this one together. One more screw. That's the last one. Yes, it is, yeah. These are two little models of yeah. my table. This, of course, is when it's big. But in the middle of this table is a big 12-pointed star, which Robert Duke didn't have. Um, and that is really the major difference between the, t the two. Yeah. And it allows for much smaller leaves, and therefore leaves that will actually fit inside the circumference or the diameter of a smaller table. Another thing about this table is that it has six segments instead of eight, but also it has a, a skirt around it, making it round. So it is always round, whereas Robert Jupes, I don't know whether you can, yes, you probably can see it here. When it was small, it wasn't actually round. It was faceted and it only had, it only was truly round when it went to its full diameter, which is shown on that part of the drawing. But these, this table is round in, in both modes. The outside of the skirt is made out of solid wood and looks like this. This is CNC routed, quite a difficult thing to make. There are holes for fastenings, there are grooves and so on for inlaid runners and things like that. So it's, it's a very complicated piece, difficult to make by hand. This is actually uh, made out of koa, a very rare wood from Hawaii. So was, that was, of course, special for a client. Other parts like this are coal molded um, plywood with a veneer on the outside. This is a panel that goes underneath to hide mechanism. Um, here's another piece that's CNC routed, solid wood again. That's unfinished. Um, this is actually teak. So we'd make, we can make a table out of any timber that anybody wants, as long as we can find it.
and we can find most things still. Right, the next step is to put the last leaves on, the pie-shaped leaves. So I'm going to lower the skirt first and then bring the table almost to full size. About there. And start putting them on. Number 12 being Number first. 12, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, I better hold it. The design of the top is more or less fixed, but it can be made out of almost any material. We actually made one out of stone a while ago. Um, and could certainly do that again. We're making another table with a stone base at the moment. Uh, we've experimented with the idea of making a glass top even. All right, next one. The number 10. components for the top leaves look like wood. Indeed, they are wood on the outside, but on the inside, they're something entirely different. They are made out of um, aluminium honeycomb, which is skinned either in aluminium or fiberglass. This is overlaid with aeroply and then a veneer. Any sort of veneer can be used. It depends on what a client wants. You can see that the, the, the veneer on each of these arrow leaves follows all the way through the star, or continues all the way through the star. You may be able to see the grain working in these sorts of directions. On these, these leaves, it is the, the veneer is split in the middle and bookmatched like that, so that each side is a mirror of the other. And actually, strangely, as you walk around the table, it, the whole appearance changes. It's quite interesting. Um, you, light and dark bits appear all the time. Um, and this is a really lovely top. I'll make it go small again. It's then shipped. Sometimes they go by air freight, sometimes by sea. Once the crates have arrived, I normally or somebody else will go out to install the table. But this only has to be done the first time a table is fitted. After that, a client should be able to handle uh, any maintenance if it's necessary. Um, themselves. They should be able to take the leaves on and off and refinish if they need to. But generally speaking, a finish will last many years. And certainly the mechanism, we don't even know how long it'll last, but I, it's my desire that they should last at least 100 years and maybe a lot longer than that. Um, that is the whole basis, of the whole principle behind the table. It is that it is the finest quality and the best materials and nothing should go wrong with it.